Why he, wasn't it mailed that day and Federal Express not until the next day? That's okay. what I want to know. Okay. Because, the rest of the stuff is unimportant. Because Arm pulled me out of whatever I was doing and told me that he needed me to run this other errand and spend about, what, an hour with this other people. By the time I finished, it was already too late. So what I was going to do... You couldn't have taken the envelope to a Federal Express office? No, I mean, I could have, but this was not an overnight deal. It was not an overnight. But you could have taken it to a Federal yes, Express office. Yes, I could office. have. All right. May I add another thing? Sure. Uh, the reason why she was actually angry at me is because, in addition to the Federal Express, she had uh, some uh, envelopes that she needed me to mail her personal... Um, I wasn't angry about no. that. Oh, no, and my personal Salem. stuff... Yes. And I asked her, well, since I need to finish this, this is, more, this is very important. The, the mailbox is right underneath, right? As soon as you get out of the elevator, it's inside the building. You know, just go ahead and mail. So you, just a minute. Let me understand this. Your employer said to you, would you mail these for me? Mm -hmm. And you told her to mail it herself. No, I didn't. Well, in effect, that's what you did. She told you to mail something. Mm -hmm. And you said, listen, it's right downstairs. Go mail it yourself. You may have said it's right downstairs. No, it's no, right underneath no. the elevator. But bottom line, you were saying to your okay. boss, I go mail it yourself. That does no, not I, sound ridiculous to you. It sounds ridiculous, but that's not what I said. She was on her way down to go over to the showroom. I said, I well, don't care if she was on her way to the post I office. I didn't say to her. If your boss says to you, if your boss, and it's a new job of two weeks, and she says, would you mail this for me, please? You don't tell her, mail it yourself. Look, there are a couple of things that I want to go over in your, in your answer to her complaint. You say that after you fired her, she called you and told you that she had gotten another job with William Morris. Yes. That's what you put in your answer. Yes, I did. When did she make that telephone call to Two you? days after the uh, firing. Well, it seems to me that you have a problem. And one of your problems is when somebody hires you for a job, and if you've been working before, and based upon what you tell me, you have a work history, you know that there are no guarantees. She hired you based upon your own statement. It was a very brief interview, mm -hmm. so you know that they were not going into an in-depth check upon your background and credentials. She offered you a job at $400 a week, clearly not a very high-paying job. You left a job in Texas where you were making approximately the same thing. I don't believe you when you say you left your whole life there because based upon what you said later, you had already broken up with your boyfriend before you came to New York. You didn't break up with your boyfriend because you were coming to take this job for equal pay. Mm -hmm. Most important, it seems to me, you're a pretty articulate gal and you know that if you want some guarantee of employment, you enter into an employment contract. I, understand. I haven't heard any bad faith or any bias on this lady's part. She hired you to do a job. You weren't doing the job to her satisfaction. Okay. And if you're not doing the job to her satisfaction, she's an employer. She doesn't have to keep you on. May I say something? Yes. Know? The job that she was hired, hired me for was completely different of the things that I was doing. You were hired as an administrative assistant. That means you do whatever it is that your boss tells you to do. And if she tells you to mail a letter for you, okay. mail a letter for it. If she tells you as her assistant that she'd like you to give the cat water, you give the cat water. Okay. You don't argue with her. You're in a low-paying administrative job. I mean, that's what you were hired for. I you didn't leave to be come head of medicine I at Harvard. You, be, you left to take a job as an administrative aide to the head of a company. I understand All right. that. And but you I... didn't have a contract, and she has the absolute right to say to you at the end of a week, two weeks, three weeks, I'm not satisfied, this is not working out, I'm going to look for somebody else. Okay. So the judgment in this case is for the defendant. That's all. Thank, Thank you. you. Everybody's excused. Step out, please.